Jupiter, the greater benefic, a planet that brings plenty, prosperity, goodness, faith, hope, and optimism, is heading into retrogradation October the 9th, 2024, all the way till February the 4th, 2025. This is going to give each of us in our lives a chance to consolidate the gains that we've been making as Jupiter has moving, been moving direct through the sign of Gemini. But in the world, it can also be a difficult time when Jupiter, the sheriff, the god of justice, the god of truth goes retrograde because things that were not true, things that were un true can be revealed as well as when he is in a retrogradation, things that have yet to be attended to, things that have to do with truth, wisdom, and justice, and fairness will come into the new stories. And we're going to talk about that for the world, but also more importantly, how you can use this Jupiter transit that lasts between October 9th and February 4th to your greatest benefit. Because when Jupiter is retrograde, or even just when Jupiter is in Gemini, it's something we only feel in the sign once every 12 years. And it's important to understand the value of the wisdom of the greater benefic when he takes time to go back over some territory that he has been traveling through since July the 15th. So you're re readdressing things that you've been experiencing in your Gemini whole sign house sky, one of 12 pieces of celestial real estate from marriage to home to career to health <laughs> to children. It depends on your sign, but you're going back to address things that you have been experiencing good things in plenty, abundance, fertility, and growth since July. But now you have to go back and deepen it and bring some wisdom to it and maybe even take some things away in order for it to be stronger, even more so when Jupiter has direct on February the 4th. So I'm going to bring some charts for you to screenshot. So get ready to take some pictures for some things you might want to put on your wall or print out. But I also want to remind you, I am doing both your sign, sun, moon, and rising. I'll explain the difference in a minute and world astrology. That's called mundane astrology. And we'll be starting with that. Then you can jump to your timestamp or the chapters by clicking the title of the video, and it'll take you straight to the sign that you wish to listen to. Before we get started on the Jupiter story, whew, welcome to my channel. My name is Lori Lothian. And if you're new here, I would love you to give me a try by hitting the like button, subscribing and hit the notification bell and just see if you like what I'm up to. And the only thing I'm sharing with people right now, Western tropical zodiac, astrologer, fixed stars, minor asteroids, that kind of thing are my gig. But I want to share one thing with you today that it's a time sensitive issue. On October 31st, it will expire. If you want to get my 2025 two hour videos, one for each sign with a PDF guidebook, this is my yearly fundraiser to get ring lights and new computers and new microphones and uh, staff to help me timestamp my videos and things that I do here on YouTube. I need backup, backup. And this is where I get the fundraising every year to find the help I need or the tools that I need to provide this content for you. So you can help me grow by buying the, this never to be seen on YouTube. YouTube, individual sign or buy the bundle It's way more cost effective. And you'll have 12 videos delivered to your, vid your in inbox on November the 12th, private videos just for you. This content never goes public and also the guidebook and all of that. In the description box below, check the link and go to see if there's something you might want to do. You grab your individual sun or your moon or your rising or buy the 12 signs and share with friends and family. Whoa. Like, whoa, <laughs> this is like, I had to take a breath. It's been intense. The eclipse, the eclipse has been rocking my energy field. Uh, the October 2nd eclipse, I'm recording on October the 4th. Hey, by the way, I did an election panel on October 3rd with some esteemed astrologers that may be coming out next Tuesday. Um, this is Friday the 4th, so it'll be Tuesday, the calendar, anyone? The 8th. So stay tuned for the election panel where we've discussed the election and who may or may not win. And we had a pretty consensual and unanimous vote on that panel. Um, but everyone was using different tools and as a teaching video, we going to show you how to get the different same answer using different astrological tools. Now, and it's not, it's not a political video, it's an astrology video. All right. So now let's go back to Jupiter and let's talk about the basics, right? just the basics. Jupiter will move through the sign of Gemini every 12 years. He'll move through every sign 
in your in the 12 pie slices of the sky called the zodiac constellations he'll get into one of those constellations every 12 years and so the last time we saw jupiter moving through the constellation of gemini the sign of the twins was june 11th 2012 to june the 26th 2013 Sometimes I give you every time this happened, but that's already out there on my Jupiter and Gemini video. It would be in my playlist for big 2024 transits. You can go watch that. But just know that June 11th of 2012 to June 26th of 2013, Jupiter was traveling through Gemini. And he retrograded in that cycle, almost exactly the same time of this retrograde. Back then, he retrograded October the 8th instead of this one, October the 9th, and through to February 4th. And this time it's February 4th. So we have a very similar vibe of what happened in 2011 and July, June of 2012, June 11th, 2012, to June of 2013. But it's the same retrograde window, you know, October, November, December, January into early February. So we have a similar energy going on. And in your own life, you may compare when we get to the all signs, I'll help you remember that, how that time in your life may replicate features of this time in your life yet again for, for good, because it's Jupiter, but also difficulty. Jupiter in the sign of Gemini is in a sign we call his detriment debility. He's not in good shape. It's a sign of Mercury's kingdom. It's about details and the fine print. And Jupiter just cares about the big like proclamations. Jupiter is like the king saying, hear, hear ye, hear ye, I declare upon the land that there shall be a tax. And then Jupiter is the guy who writes up the details and sends the tax bills out. So, Gemini, I mean, sorry, Mercury. So it's not Jupiter's big bombastic in general, and, and he's not good with the details. That's one way of putting it. Um, and so what we call is his detriment is also called his exile because across from Gemini Sag, and that's his happy home. He wants to be back in the Sagittarius fire kingdom, but he's stuck in little niddly air, air details of Gemini slash um, Mercury's territory. So keep that in mind, but he's still Santa Claus. It's like Santa Claus goes, ho, ho, ho. I only have two bags of presents, not three. I'm a little bit not feeling great here, but I still do my best to bring you very Godfather, Santa Claus, goody, goody bags. So he's trying hard here. Now for the world, it may be difficult. So we'll get to that, but for you, it will be not so difficult. Now, one thing I want to show you is there's going to be certain signs that are more impacted by anything Jupiter does in Gemini. And those are what we call angular or at 90 degrees or opposite, right? So you Sagittarius is opposite Gemini. Of course, you Geminis and Sagittarius both get this energy quite, quite intensely, but also you Virgo and Pisces on the other axes. So Virgo, Pisces, Sag, and Geminis are really always feeling the most intense strength from what we see going on when Jupiter moves through the sign of Gemini. And there are certain dates if you're listening for your sun sign. So let's talk about how to listen today when I do your rising sign, sun sign, or moon. Your rising sign is a character, the avatar you're playing in the game of life. It is a fictional being that you inhabit. The deepest essence of you, your core self is the sun, but the sun sign is also things to do with career purpose and often father and father figures. The animating force that brings your body alive, including your mind and emotions is the moon, but the moon is also your home, your safety needs, your emotions, of course, and your mother. So when we listened all through, we have to remember the different meanings of what we're listening for and about. I find the older I get, my sun sign is more relevant and I'm less playing the character I've been assigned to. You can think of the sun as my actress self, and I'm playing, I'm a fire sun, Aries, and I'm playing the role of an Aquarius rising. And what animates my mind body is my Aries moon. All right, so I'm going to show you a little picture to screenshot. Just some of you might like this. Instead of me talking and you trying to take notes, take a screenshot and see if this doesn't help. I wrote this down for roughly what I think are the degrees most impacted. Uh-oh. I can't get that to show up in front of me, but I hope you guys are seeing it. Yeah. So basically the most impacted sun signs, right? In Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, and Sag are the dates below the retrograde, October the 9th to February 4th. And I'm going to talk about the shadow period. Give me a minute, but that's the actual retrograde between the degrees of 21 and 11 Gemini. And it was indeed that Jupiter was at 21 degrees of the sign of Gemini, right? When he turns around to go backwards to 11 degrees. But where was Jupiter at 11 degrees before now? 
July 15th. So it is literally Jupiter going back over area of the sky that he traveled from July the 15th to October 9th, and then reassessing it and going back and dragging back to make a bigger impact. It's a little bit like if you're an artist, you might sketch something and you got the outlines. Now you're going to go back and color it in, fill it in, and then go forward again. So Pisces, February the 29th to March the 11th. Your degrees of your Pisces sun are most impacted by the range of the retrogradation. Gemini, May the 31st sun, Gemini sun to June the 12th, most impacted by the degrees of the retrogradation. Virgo sun, September the 2nd to the 13th. You're born, you're Virgo. Hey, I'm a Virgo sun. I'm born September the 2nd to the 13th, most impacted by this retrogradation. And of course, Sagittarius across the way. If you're a Sag, December 2nd birth time to the 13th, those Sagittarius suns or birthday people are most impacted. So grab that screenshot, make it uh, something you can use. Now, that said, all Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, and Sagittarius suns, moons, and risings will still feel this because it's square or opposing you, but it is also not as heavy or intense or as acute or specific as the dates that I've given you here. And this same chart would apply to back in the earlier uh, 2012 to 13, October to February retrograde, because it was roughly the same degrees as well. So like just, this is your screenshot, take that screenshot and hopefully it is somewhat useful, I hope. The other thing I'd like to show you for your use, for you to use before we talk about what it means when, <laughs> When Jupiter is stationing retrograde on the Mars of the United States Sibley chart, like it happened to also do in 1941, and in the couple of months that followed that station retrograde on Mars's, the Gemini Mars in the Sibley U.S. House of Open Enemies, Pearl Harbor attack, and the United States was drawn into a war with Japan and subsequently a war with Europe in Second World War. So I'm giving you a teaser or a heads up. That's where the mundane astrology may be taking us. We may be talking about a dragging the United States into a war by provocation. I know there's conspiracy theories about Pearl Harbor as well as 9-11. So let's just say on the surface, it looks like the United States might have a reason to get into a war as opposed to simply being an imperialistic uh, you know, moral sheriff of the world, new world order, not even the uh, rules based order that doesn't exist. This is what you can screenshot right now. Hopefully I'm not in your way because I see me here, there. Um, maybe I, you don't see me, maybe you do. So let me minimize myself just for a minute. And this is what I want you to consider screenshotting for your own reference points. And uh, Jupiter enters retrograde zone on July 15th at 11 Gemini. And now he's going to go retrograde back to that degree starting on October 9th and finally getting back to 11, 11 Gemini on February 4th. So in essence, I'm saying that you, me, and the world are tra traipsing back when it comes to fairness, justice, plenty, prosperity, awards and rewards. Jupiter's going retrograde back over the territory in Gemini he's already covered before. For example, in the United States natal Sibley chart, this is the house of open enemies, adversaries, and opponents. And Jupiter's changing mind and going back and doing something different over the same territory that happened to be active on the 15th of July. And you might remember that Donald Trump's assassination attempt happened on the 13th of July. So there's something about that station a retrograde up near Donald Trump's son that is very important. Donald Trump's son is about 22 degrees of Gemini. And uh, Kamala Harris also has her, Kamala Harris has her um, ascendant at 24 degrees of Gemini. So both of these people are experiencing this energy. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Now, I just set this up to know that basically on February the 4th of 2025, Jupiter is no longer retrograde and begins to turn around and finally finally on April the 30th has gotten back to the same 21 degrees of Gemini. This is an indication basically that July 15th through to April 30th is one big Jupiter in Gemini story. Okay. One big Jupiter and Gemini story in your life, my life, and the life of the world. 
Now, I've been saying this for a long time. Jupiter retrograde station October the 9th before the election in the United States of, on November the 5th means that Jupiter comes up very close to Kamala Harris's 22 degree sun and because it's 21 degree station retrograde and comes all the way up to within three degrees of Donald Trump's, sorry, comes really close to Kamala Harris's 24 degree rising sign and very close to 22 degree sun for Donald Trump. And because Jupiter goes really close, just imagine it's like this. I don't know, a good, a good example, right? Two pens. <laughs> Let's say this is Donald Trump's son, right? At 22 degrees of Gemini. And along comes Jupiter and he gets really close and he's going closer and closer and he gets almost ready to touch. And he says, don't oh, forget it and going back. Same thing happens to Kamala. And that's like a refrainment, a refrainment from making, I refrain from eating gluten. I refrain from touching the Trump son, says Jupiter. I refrain from touching the Kamala Harris ascendant. So in a refrainment, I think there is a refrainment from coronation because Jupiter represents king and queen energy. There is a refrainment from coronation of either of these during the election, which means there's a delay of some sort. And that's another general meaning of a retrograde planet, a delay because we have to go back over some old territory. So the full results are not available. Why will there be a delay in the United States election? It could be a close call. It could be that Trump's not well, because this, I'm telling you, he looks like he's going to have a health challenge in the month of October. <laughs> so if he's not in this chart, and if he's not well or something happens, he has a cardiac event or ends up in a hospital, maybe that's going to throw everything into chaos. And now the Republicans need time to find another, uh, another leader to run against Harris. And that's going to be the first time in the United States, I think there was actually an election day delay. I mean, it's one thing to have delayed results, like the hanging chads and the Gore Bush story. This is not even, I'm saying maybe the election is delayed. I often thought also, unfortunately, I don't want to overstate this one, but an attack on U.S. soil by a hostile enemy or a terrorist event could indicate such kerfuffle there'd be an election delay or a plague or whatever. But if it's an election delay, it's going to be extremely important to understand how rare that could be, that, that would there would be cause for that. But there's something that delays the coronation of either of them and I don't know why. And second of all, will Donald Trump even be on the ballot? Because I've said, um, I actually think Rick Levine stated he didn't see either Biden nor um, Trump on the end ballot. At one point, he mentioned that. And I've said the same thing for a long time. I now Biden stepped off the ballot, but Trump's still there. So, you know, if he doesn't, Trump doesn't make it to the ballot box and he's not the guy on top, it will probably be a woman because I also mentioned there may be two women pitting against each other for this election. And I said that based on the Aries ingress chart um, and it's on a couple of my videos back in the spring. So moving forward, let's say that Jupiter retrogrades, failing from coronate, for, fails to coronate either party, but there's something else. And I'm crediting Dan Waits of World Astrology Report, who's been on my channel a couple of times and a great channel, if you love mundane astrology, for mentioning this in a video because it made me think about it too. Oh, yes, it was back in 1941 in the month of November. Was it November? I wrote it down. What was the date? What was the date? It was back October 9th and 10th of 1941, the Jupiter stationed retrograde on Mars. In the United States Sibley chart, Mars is sitting at 21 degrees of Gemini. And here we have Jupiter retrograding at 21 degrees of Gemini this October 8th, 9th, 9th, back in um, Pearl Harbor, well, back in October 9th, 10th of 1941. Jupiter station retrograde in the house of open enemies on Mars, the planet of war in the sign of Gemini in the United States seventh house Sibley chart. And it led to the December Pearl Harbor attack. And within days, the United States declared war in Japan. And a couple of days after that, Germany and um, Italy declared war on the United States. And that dragged the United States not only into a war against the Pacific nation of Japan, but into a war in Europe, which was, of course, World War II. Now, if, if it happens again, nothing is ever the same. Planets are in different places, okay? So you, you can't make it similar 
always perfectly the same. Back in the day, we also had planetary placements that were quite dissimilar, especially the outer planets. So we won't always see the same thing happening. But I did take note that back in the, where did I write it down? Oh, well, I'm not going to dive into it now. I might do a separate video. But anyway, um, we had we had the Leo uh, axis and the Aquarius axis activated back in the 1940s in a similar way. So look, I'm just going to say, I hope not. But at this rate, the United States looks to me energetically, it is getting caught up in defending the nation of I in the Middle East at the cost of being dragged into a greater conflagration against nations of the Middle East, like Iran. And at this point, the United States is at high risk of a Pearl Harbor type return to a reason to get in the war. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, I can't, I, I, in a thousand years, I know that the nation of Iran would not actually launch a on U.S. soil attack. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. They're just not. But something could happen where the United States has a de facto excuse to get into the war. Okay. It's a military industrial complex and it's about trade routes. It's about securing a canal that rivals the Suez Canal that would go through the nation of I and northern Gaza. And that is one of the big reasons, plus the gas fields and oil fields, but it's one of the big reasons this war is an economic, money, power, greed, and trade route war that's going on already in the Middle East. This is why it's happening. This is why the United States unequivocally is backing the uh, rogue pariah state that's happening to basically gone berserker. So I don't know if it was intentional. It's one thing, like you say to, um, you know, a dog, you're training the dog to do something and, or you're hoping the dog will follow the rules. And, you know, you got the dog, your pit bull trained to, you know, catch something or eat something or defend something. And then it, it just goes rabbit on you. I mean, because the leadership could be a little bit um, religious and, you know, is, is yeah, I'm not going to go there. All right, let's move on. I just don't want to get an algorithmic ban, and I, I'm tired of being trolled about it. Um, but if you ever think a war is because it's what you think it is, moral moral imperative, no, it's about the money involved. Follow the money. And I remember the WMDs in the date back in the day, and with the Bush thing and the weapons of mass destruction that did not exist in the nation of I, R-A-Q. And I know that I had intelligence friends who knew that. I knew that before you knew that. I knew that three months before you guys, no, three years before the world knew that. And so this is a similar time. I'm going to expect that uh, given some repeat cycles to do with the Mars at the bending of the nose, we're going to find that the reasons we're told that war is going to, is happening, must happening or should happen is nothing to do with why it is happening. And I would hope, I would hope I would hope that it's different this time. I would hope that this humanity who no longer trusts the media, no longer trusts governments, no, no longer wants to be a sheep and like herded by the malevolent dark forces that are running the show, stands up and uprises in the next five years. The United States is going into its Uranus return. That it, that's the same thing, 25, 26, it's most active in 26, that led to civil war in the United States, the American Revolution, and World War II as well. Uranus return energy every 84 years, but it's often for the United States an indicator of going into some event with either civil war within its ranks, which is very possible in this iteration, or getting involved in a global war. Um, all right, let's go and let's talk about the sky. Let me show it to you. And let me give you a few pointers. And then we'll move away from the sky to your sign. This is about a 90 minute video. If you're trying to time it in the live premiere, I'm hoping not to go much longer than that in the date this time today. Now, let's say uh, right here, um, and by the way, Jupiter is in the sign of Gemini this time around, May the 26th, 2024 to June the 9th, 2025. All right. May the 26th, 2024 to June the 9th, 2025. All right. So what I want you to see, that's the United States natal chart on the, I'll put it around the other way, just so you understand that I didn't make this up. And uh, the guy who's the head of the state of Israel is in serious harm's way, October the 27th to November the 2nd or 3rd, as Mars opposite Pluto squares his sun. So keep that in mind. Part of what Jupiter retrograde might be doing is also completely changing the structure of the problem in the Middle East as well. 
So there's the United States chart. There is Mars on the descendant. The Uranus return is happening because Uranus is leaving the sign of Taurus where it's been since 2018, May, leaving the sign of Taurus in the month of, well, next summer, but then going back a bit and then coming into 2026 and into 2027, the United States will find Uranus on Uranus. The Uranus return is activated. And again, I already told you what that's meant in the past, those those, uh, those wars that have happened. Because this is the United States identity, right? Ascendant in Sagittarius, 12 degrees. And this is a house of adversaries. So whenever you get Mars, Mars is there. The United States is born to be a militaristic country or an imperialistic country or to fight for its freedom, whatever, because it's got a war god in its seventh house of adversary. So it's always out there. I was looking for what wars happened in a certain year and I was trolling through Wikipedia and I realized there's not one single month, not one single month, one, one single year since its founding, the United States has not been involved in some military incursion. It's a highly militaristic country. And so it's born to be that way with the placement of Mars. So, <sighs> Donald Trump has his son right now in his solar return chart on this son of the United States of America and in the Sibley chart. And I think he might be martyred. <laughs> I think there's going to be another attempt for him to be taken out or it's going to be it's going to look like a natural health problem, but it isn't. I think there's an attempt for the sky to martyr him. And, you know, I really do. And it's not looking good for him. I, I mean, I don't even know he's on the ballot. Let's put it that way. In the meantime, Back to this, Mars is sitting here and he's waiting for the energy of Jupiter retrograde in the real time sky to make contact with him. And that is exactly what happens October the 9th. And it is before the United States of America has its election, which is indicating a difficult situation, a situation in which quite probably the actual election results are not known or the election is delayed. So this is a station retrograde on the 9th. There's Jupiter at 21 degrees and 26 minutes. And there's Mars at 21 degrees and 22 minutes. And then Jupiter will be going during that same day, okay, into station retrograde. Now, Jupiter retrograde here at 21 degrees is conjunct Kamala Harris's ascendant at 24 and Donald Trump's son, as I mentioned, at 22, but not perfectly, not partile. Therefore, there's a wait, there's a delay in coronation. Sometimes that's the simplest way of putting it. Now you don't even need to look at, oh no, what is this Mars opposite Pluto energy that comes into fruition at the tail end of Mars moving through the sign of Cancer? Well, Pluto is in the tail end of Capricorn. That's happening just before the election. It can look like rebellion rights and difficulty, but can look like a, 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 a an event, like a 9-11 event, something like that playing out just prior to the actual election. And Jupiter will retrograde all the way back, of course, as I mentioned, to 11 degrees in February, meaning that in February, he's right here. And he's going to be just shy of the ascendant at 12 degrees. Well, just past the ascendant at 12 degrees. So he goes over the descendant ascendant axis, the identity and the enemies and open enemies of the United States. And then he crosses forward again, July the 15th. Again, this is territory we've been traveling with Jupiter since July the 15th. And we go through that same zone of territory all the way through backwards until February the 4th. And then Jupiter goes direct and covers the territory it's been traveling all over again. So we're really in the same, everything that's been happening, oh my God, in our world since July the 15th will not even completely phase out until April the 30th. Keep that in mind. Now, the only other thing I want to say about the sky is that was the Pearl Harbor thing. Pearl Harbor happened in December. Jupiter's retrograding stationary. Stationary planets are powerful. October the 9th, just like the same time frame of the Pearl Harbor story, but Pearl Harbor didn't happen to two months later. So don't say, oh, nothing happened when Jupiter station retrograde on the United States Mars. Nothing may happen at that time. It's, it's a conceivable, absolutely nothing will happen at that time. We need to wait and see what may or may not happen 
at that time. You know, the new nation of Ukraine, you know, 1991 formation is a Capricorn rising and Pluto is in Capricorn and will be opposed by Mars as we end the month of October into very early November. There's going to be dramatic changes in Ukraine regarding the situation uh, with uh, Russia. This will be the time. By the way, um, there was a massive massacre of Jewish people called the Odessa massacre in October after <laughs> the station Jupiter retrograde, October of 2020, no, 1941. So the other thing we saw in the retrogradation of Jupiter was a Romanian army, army and some German people, soldiers and the SS doing all these incredible massacres in Ukraine of Russian Jews who lived there or Ukrainian Jews who lived there. And I think 30,000 people were massacred that October and then over time quite a bit more. And so again, there is a, not necessarily going to be a similar correlation of anything in Ukraine looking anything like that, but just the idea that when the God of justice goes retrograde you know, he's, or not moving forward, there may be times in our world collectively where we see things happen that would make us gasp. And the word you know, massacre is one that one. Okay, go ahead and troll me because I know that you're probably a Zionist. All right. All right. Moving away from this story. Clear those drawings. Is there only anything else I want to say about Jupiter retrograde in the sign of Gemini uh, for the world or for the United States? It is impacting Donald Trump's reputation area of the sky, his 11th house, where he has the North Node and his son and Uranus. So there's a lot for him going on where his reputation, his career success may be impacted. For Kamala Harris, the retrograde lack of coronation is about her identity, is about who she is in the world. And she just had an eclipse in her 10th house of reputation, which can indicate an escalation or an increase in her reputation, but it is also a South Node eclipse. So she may have a personal reputation downdraft of some kind coming off the retrogradation of Jupiter so close to her ascendant, also a south node Virgo eclipse in her, I mean, sorry, a north node Pisces eclipse in her 10th house. I apologize, an increase of her reputation, but still it's like Jupiter comes up an increase of reputation. Uh, the Pisces September 17th eclipse, lunar eclipse was shining a bright light of increase or volume up in her 10th house of career. But I don't know why this retrograde is happening as it gets close to her actual ascendant and backs off. What is Jupiter not ready to give? What gifts is he not ready to award or reward Kamala nor Donald Trump? I, if I had time, I would take a look at the chart of Nikki Haley because she would be the next stand in should Donald Trump not make it. Let me, let me just stop take a quick look at her chart, assuming there is one, and just tell you what I'm seeing without dragging it into the story. Then we're doing your sign. Jupiter's retrograding. Let's tell you what it's all about. All right. I just grabbed her chart on a screenshot. I don't have the patience to cast it. It's off of Astro theme, I think. And she, we don't have a time for her. She is 52 years old. She was born in 1972. And she basically is in her sixth house profection age, which can work for her getting good career gains going, depends on her actual houses in which her sixth house falls, which we don't have the information for. But it's not exactly a stellar like, wow, look at me roll into like my high noon of success. Second of all, you can see that she's got her son at 29 degrees. Oh, God, gosh, yeah, of Capricorn. Well, you know, what's that 29 cap, right? That's, and by the way, that's where Mercury sits for RFK at 29 degrees of the uh, sign of Pluto as a sign of Capricorn. So Pluto is sitting right now here on top of Nikki Haley's sun and will go direct on October the 11th. So he's with Pluto retrograde, she's been off the scene. She was the second highest number of votes in the primaries. Um, so she would be a second choice maybe in this case, if, if Trump is incapacitated, um, Pluto uh, is intensifying the power of her anoretic sun, which we do not know which house this sun is sitting in. And remember that, okay? Like RFK, she has a Mercury in Capricorn and a sun in Capricorn, as well as in this case, nope, that's it. Those are the two stories. Um, with Pluto bearing down on her North Node over the next five, six years, she will increase her power in the world and her presence in the world. She's not going any place. You might also notice that she has in the sky um, 
a very fiery Mars. She is a warrior. I didn't like when she kissed a bomb or signed a bomb that uh, the United States supplied to the nation of I that was going to be dropped on innocent civilians and said, get them all, get them all or something, or slaughter them all or some horrible thing. I know she was probably referring to the HAMAS people, but it would just took, it just felt to me really really over the top, but with a Mars and Aries, Mars and Aries are a natural fundamental warriors, etc. You know, that's a, not an easy place for Mars in the sense that Mars is also in a square to the sun. Therefore, her father relationship is complicated and difficult, but let's not do therapy on her. Um, Mars is also in her chart opposite Pluto um, and square the sun. She's got a broad T square, uh, something going on with men, authority figures, her father figures, <clears throat> Uh, power struggles. This is part of her baked in chart. Um, it can be very, very difficult for a person to be a father figure squaring Pluto, squaring Mars, a narcissistic controller. I do not know anything about her history. I'm just reading her chart. Um, what's going on in the real time sky? Well, of course, Jupiter is retrograding and we don't know what is in her Gemini house because we don't know her. Uh, we do not have a clue her birth time. However, she just has Saturn there. And there's an indication that Saturn Oh, no, Saturn's at 29 degrees of Taurus. Ignore that. <laughs> oh, but her Saturn at 29 degrees of Taurus was activated on July the 15th with the Mars Uranus conjunction. Okay, at around 26 degrees of Taurus. So she has been had a major activation, the same one that uh, Donald Trump's midheaven got uh, connected to. And her Saturn is on his midheaven, and she can be uh, someone who elevates into the power slot that she, that Trump tries to inhabit, you know, with her uh, authority or her expertise. So that's an interesting placement as well. She could be a stand-in. Nikki Haley could be a stand-in if Donald Trump is incapacitated and the Republican Party has to find somebody lickety split. And so it would be Haley Vance and she would be the the one in the front lead. Okay. Um, She's got an exalted Venus, by the way. There's so many meanings to that. I wish I knew which house that was in. With a, with the moon. Hmm. Okay. Anything else I want to say about her? Because I'm getting uh, out of this now. Uh, the stationary um, stationary Jupiter for her, right? Jupiter stations at 21 is just shy of her Jupiter return. I mean, her Jupiter opposition, not quite, but she will be challenged next year when Jupiter goes, uh, you know, April, May into April, May. Uh, there'll be a nice little activation of her natal Jupiter. Uh, May, June, July, and she's going to be uh, challenged in some way to step up to greater levels of power or authority in some area of her life. But we don't know her houses, so we can't really say all that much. Eh? That's all I've got. So I'd say that, you know, with her six house perfection age, which is to be of service and to, to have a job, she and I don't know what the ruler of her sixth house is, she could be catapulted into a position of like, oh, when you're not an actor, uh, you have to be, you can, the actor gets sick and can't do the job on the stage, you know, and there's a stand-in, there's a name for that. But that person who stands in, the stand-in for Trump, that could happen. The sky looks bad for Trump. His health does not look great in the next three weeks. And everyone's saying it. I've been saying it for a long time. I hope we're not giving him like a sort of a consensual reality curse by the collective, you know, but it just doesn't look good. I don't mean his cognitive health. I mean his, I mean his body health. And I'll be doing a video on why separately, maybe. Um, and uh, who else do I want to talk about? Mm. I'll be bringing up uh, the leader of Israel's birthday chart as well in another video. Now, we're going to do... Ah! We're going to do your sign. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We're starting with Aries. We're going to I remind you that this has happened before. I'll give you the dates. I'm reminding you that this is a story that brings you into territory. You've been traveling since July, and it's not a bad transit for you. It's meaning that you're not going to try to make massive outer gains, massive strides towards some new prosperity, success, expansion, and growth, but instead retract and go deeper and see what you need to, like, Take the thing you've been working on since July further. And when will you inherently take it further? Certainly in February, February 4th onward as Jupiter moves direct. Now let's go ahead and do every single sign. I just want to mention one more thing before I do your sign. I forgot to mention the asteroid Absolus is sitting with Jupiter as he stations retrograde. And that's not a small deal. That to me is 
oops, sorry, the asteroid Absolus was sitting with this, the asteroid Absolus was sitting with Jupiter in 1941 when he went to station retrograde. And that's not a small deal because Absolus is about a centaur who foretells a massive war. And it has to do with that idea as well as secrets and things hidden and sensing something might be going deeply wrong. So it's about a seer predicting a war. It connects to the idea of, um, you know, perceiving bad things are just about to come down the line. And so I thought to myself, given that in 1941, Absolus was sitting on Jupiter as he stationed on the Mars ascendant descendant you know, states, where is Absolus in our sky this time? Does it have any role in the story of this station on the United States Mars? I'm just wondering. And the answer is absolutely yes, which is where it gets a little bit daunting because we can see, and I was just about to do all signs, so it's not cued, right? I've got this set for October the 10th. It's the retrograde station is October the 9th. It doesn't really matter. Here you're going to see we have the same story. Absolute is an asteroid that is traveling centaur body. They're traveling usually around, you know, five to six years around the zodiac. And so it's not like every time we have Jupiter and Gemini, we have Absolute sitting with the planet Jupiter. And this is Absolute, the same asteroid that preceded the Pearl Harbor attack of 1941 when Jupiter stationed on Mars, the United States ascended. Okay, we're back to the same story. A centaur who sensed the war between that was going to come between the lapis and the seer, uh, the lapis and the centaurs, and um, it was also about it's about things that are hidden and conspiracy theories. And I'll cover this a little bit more in my weekly video starting on Monday. I just want to say, wow, there's absolute with Jupiter yet again. You cannot make this stuff up. We are pretty darn close to a rinse repeat from the Pearl Harbor drag, U.S. dragged into a war type of vibe. Okay, we're just back again. Let's go ahead and do all signs. All right, let's go. And we'll start with the Aries sun, moon, and Aries rising sign. And in the beginning of this journey, guys, we want to compare notes to what happened back in the day when we had a uh, Jupiter moving through Gemini back in June of 2012 to June of 2013 and back again. This retrograde is similar. It was la it was back in October of 2012 to February of 2015. Try to compare your life and what was going on then to some themes that may indeed be reoccurring here. Now, technically, Jupiter is retrograding, stationing retrograde on the 9th. Hang on, let's make it like the right day here. That'd be useful, Lori. So by the 10th, we see him actually turning uh, into retrogradation. We'll make it simple. Okay. So huh, basically what's going on when Jupiter goes retrograde is you're going to be experiencing some changes in the, your reality regarding things to do with writing, communicating, traveling, teaching, learning, and relationship to younger sibling or to siblings in general, plus aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, and your local neighborhood and neighbors. So retrograde Jupiter may indicate something that could say that you may have some changes with those people and how you relate to them. But because you learn and educate here or teach the skills-based education, or because you travel, it could indicate travel back over terrain you've been before. Now, remember, this, is, this started up in July on the 15th. So if it's travel, you'll travel back to a place that you've traveled after July 15th. If it's a relationship with a sibling, aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, nephew, there's a return to some issues that you are addressing with that sibling beginning in July. I'm an Aries sun and moon. And, you know, I was visiting my youngest, sis, younger middle sister um, back in July. And it really is like, oh, well, maybe I'll be going back. Well, yeah, I was still with her. I didn't get back to Vancouver until like well, roughly July 15th, right? Was that when I, no, no, I was still visiting her back then. Yeah, I was still with her. So basically I may go back and visit my sister. It's something very literal. You don't have to think it's a big deal. Jupiter wants to go back and deepen something. If you had a writing project that you started, for example, sometime after July 15th, and the universe is going to say Jupiter's got the goods to give you the, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the, 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 the intensity of, of clarity of the wise, uh, good Jupiter to go back and get that writing project done. But you would have started it as some writing project after July the 15th. Anything you began after July the 15th is now going to be readdressed through to February the 4th. 
Now, I noticed that we have the moon here with Jupiter as he's stationing retrograde. The moon will be in Gemini. And there's an indication that there may be elements of this neighbor neighborhood travel that connect you to the word home. Maybe in some way you might be thinking because the local environment is third house of going back to an old neighborhood or to an old home in another neighborhood. Something to do with the word home could be connected for all Aries to this. This Jupiter retrograde also is incredibly powerful if you want to study and learn. Jupiter is the teacher teachers from the past returning to you, uh, uh, ideas about what you want to study that you maybe didn't follow through on since July 15th. Now Jupiter's retrograde, you're going to dig your heels in or dig your, yourself into the learning and understanding and studying energy. As Jupiter is retrograding in the sign of Gemini, you'll not, you might notice Oh, I'm still in 1941. That is so funny. That is so funny. Oh my God. I'm literally looking at the chart. I'm willing to say, guys, I'm not going to fix this. I'm not going to fix this. And like, what the hell are the other planets doing in these places? All right. So, <laughs> so sorry. Let's move us into this century. Give me a second, will you? Oh my God. Well, I'm in the right, no, I'm not even in the right century. That is too funny. Oh my God. I have to tell my time stamping sister not to start there. Give me a minute. Okay, guys, let's get going and talk about Aries first, sun, moon, and rising. And we'll move through each sign, probably about five minutes per sign, and get out of that mundane astrology. And I will remind you of the old dates that you need to pay attention to as well. So don't forget, it was back in June of 12, 2012 to June of 2012. 13 that you had Jupiter moving through your Gemini sky and also retrograding October to February as we have this time. There's a sense of what you need to go back over here, maybe things to do with writing projects, teaching projects, learning projects, travel opportunities, things connected to sibling younger or just siblings in general, neighbors and neighborhood, right? Those are third house things. You're going back over old territory. I was visiting my sister in July. Uh, after uh, there was still with her in July 15th. And it may mean that I'm simply going to travel back to see my sister between now and J J February the 4th. I have a moon and a sun in Aries. So I'm using me as an example. Where are you going to go back and deepen something, especially if it's a creative project as well as writing, or it's anything to do with a communications project or anything to do with your website or social media, where Jupiter is expanding and growing, giving you plenty and plentitude. And now you're going to go back and you're going to revise, you're going to rethink it, you're going to deepen it, you're going to look for um, you know ways that it could even be better after February 4th, when you go forward in this area, better and better, right? And so things that are connected to the plenty, prosperity, and magnification of your third house are going to be addressed again. Um, and, you know, if you went back to 2011, you know, the fall, October to February, 2013, I mean, 12, if you went back to June of 2012, all right, to no, if you went back to October 2012 to February 2013, my brain, you might be able to compare the kinds of things you are doing in that retrograde cycle as well that involve third house matters. For example, I went to visit my sister. You know, I really did. And that, that was one of the things I did in that window of time. I mean, I remember that, but you don't always remember the past. Just know that similar things are happening yet again. Um, if there's anything that you're doing with the third house about actually studying, because you can take an, an educational course and Jupiter's retrograde, you may study something you've studied before. You may go back and relearn it or learn, deepen the learning you've already had gotten. So you may go back or an old teacher, Jupiter guru guide teacher from the past may come back into your life as Jupiter retrogrades in the third house of the kinds of people that you find in through travel or in your local neighborhood or through learning environments. And as Jupiter is going to be retrograding during this part of the journey, and I'll be doing a whole separate video on some of the transits, one of the big pieces of his retrograde here may be the fact that as he goes backwards, he's going to be talking with Saturn. Now, the two of them, Saturn will turn direct mid-November. No, mid the two of them in this conversation will be in a square in December, and that Saturn square in December will feel really challenging. You'll come up against that pivotal moment. Um, the, I think it's December 30th, but just know the month of December where things that you're trying to create in your third house, like mama, like a 
Jupiter, like a big pregnancy thing, wanting to make baby creative ideas, projects, businesses, learning uh, more travel, trying to get that off the ground. There's a kind of break or a caution note coming through the sky from Saturn in your 12th house. It could even just simply indicate it's time to take a downwind and don't travel too far. Don't go abroad. Don't maybe do things that have to do with um, far off journeys and to far off lands. I mean, you can't make this up, but May 26, Jupiter entered the third house and I went on a pilgrimage to Europe. This would be like, oh, there is a like a thing going on here, Del Camino. There's a thing going on here where you feel this kind of blockage coming through the sky in late December because of Jupiter squaring Saturn. So keep that one very pivotal story in mind. Um, it could be everything's going fine. And in December, you have to slow down your great gains from international borderless revenue. You have to rethink a plan to travel abroad. You might have to redo something to do with foreign shores and creativity or earning money online. Those kinds of things need to kind of hit a, the gears are grinding down. You're grinding the car gears here. Things are not going forward as that you would like. You're hitting a tension point in the month of December. Uh, as a result of the retrograde of Jupiter. And, you know, that is not just a one-off. You've already had the square already in the month of August, and this is the second pass. So you have to keep in mind that you will have this repeat of some of the grinding tension you've already felt. Let me just say this. I'm going to simply stop the share for 30 seconds and get the August date for all signs. You would think I had prepared it, right? August the 19th. So if you want to think about it, August 19th, give or take a few a week or two on either side, where did you feel some kind of frustration, some kind of grit, some kind of tension regarding the matters of your third house and matters of your 12th house? They'll be back again, December the 24th, courtesy of a Jupiter retrograde. And so when we get to June, that happens again, but in different signs. So we'll cover that when we get there. All right. So any other advice I'd have for you? Let me pull up the chart uh, again. So I'm sharing the screen as an Aries. Any other advice? Because I'm one of you, Aries, Sun, and Moon. Uh, I don't know. Jupiter is is definitely wanting you to really dive deeper into your significant, long term, committed love st story if you can. And in the sense that Jupiter represents something that brings goodness and bounty, and he is flowing, flowing to uh, Mercury with Juno, the goddess of committed love. And if you're in a long-term love relationship, for most Aries, this is going to be a deepening of the connection in that beautiful trine energy that forms at the station retrograde. There's some way in which you might be able to deepen your connection to peace with your loved one, uh, harmony, ease, bounty, and flourishment. And if you're not with somebody and you want to start a new relationship under this energy, I may not because of Scorpio Venus, but if you're already in one, this is wonderful. And potentially it could bode well for some peace in the Middle East, but I'm going to do a separate video on that on Monday's video. All right. So Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. I think Jupiter retrograding here. Go back to June of 2012 to June of 2013, just to remind yourself what it's like to have Jupiter in your second house, because he'll be here again. He was here May 26th through to next June 9th. So this is a vibe of greater prosperity financially. Your earnings, your resources, your possessions are increasing and you are getting more wealthy or more resourced financially in this time period. And that includes things like possessions of homes and objects you need as well as resources financially. So this is your blessing window once every 12 years. And then the retrograde is to deepen that just like he retrograded in the October through February of 12, 2012 to 13. He's back again doing the same old thing this October 9th to February uh, the 4th, you might go back and revision, revise, or redo, or reset something in the money work part of your chart that you begin to activate in July, around the middle of July. Because he's retrograde, he's going to bring you better things by going back over old ground. If you're looking for an ob a job or a place of work or a new job, I'd say once you get Pluto, October the 11th, to move into your Aquarian 10th house, and Jupiter is also still in his retrogradation through your second, and you're looking for work as a Taurus, oh, <clears throat> 
job work scenarios and opportunities from the past that are quite powerful and good for your wealth can occur after October the 11th through to February the 4th. With Jupiter in retrograde here, it's also a note that he squares Saturn December the 24th, just like he did August the 19th. This is going to put you into recontact with events a week or two around August the 19th that may have felt like frustration or stuck energy where you want to do some massive expansion or growth in your food, in your food style, well, that too, in your money and earnings and possessions and Saturn put a break on and says, slow it down. It's not time to buy the Maserati. It's not time to do whatever thing you're going to do that requires a huge amount of hope and faith. So you're going to go back and fill the this frustration on the third week of December, or this need to slow down and be more cautious about how fast you're expanding. I think Jupiter over promises in Gemini. He doesn't see the details it's going to take to get everything done. Jupiter expands your food style with wisdom and knowledge. You could change what you eat in your diet during this transit. The retrograde would go back to old dietary habits and patterns. And Saturn's constriction and constraint from the 11th house is fascinating. It could literally be the guidance of a friend or an ally that's helping you curtail some uneasy food styles during this transit. We do not mind that it starts off because that bakes in the energy of a flow to Mercury Juno in your house of work. And ultimately, this is also where you service debt that you've accumulated. This could indicate some prosperity coming to you from the past that allows you to complete or finish a debt. This could also include money from father, father figures and inheritances. I'm not going to delineate all the reasons why, but Jupiter is a ruler of your eighth house of inheritance and Pluto is in the house of father figures. Some of you may indeed receive some kind of collateral money or benefits from a father, father figure that could help you pay off debt because Jupiter Santa Claus is flowing to the place where you service the debt. Mercury is there with Juno, debt contracts, debt agreements, you have made and that can be mortgages that can be credit card debt that can be any debt real debt serviced all right i don't think that with jupiter here you can go wrong on your finances even in a retrograde even in its detriment but i will say that he does have great ideas and doesn't always have the details for how to execute them so as he's retrograde and he just start flows to mercury the the mind, the intellect, and the detailed-oriented guy in Libra, this is a good time for you to straighten out matters to do with servicing of credit card debts or other kinds of money you owe and using an analytical approach to do it or an incremental approach or a smart approach to debt management. And Jupiter may support that over the months that follow. He does go direct on February the 4th. And so there is a sense that then all things are moving forward after being recalibrated, reassessed, and revisited. And, and that's about all I have for you. I really think that this is really good for your money, basically. End of story. But you're going to have to deepen it. And, you know, you know, things you're doing now will help you leap forward February through to June in your finances. Okay, so the things that you are going inward about become outward expressions February through to June in a financial increase for you and connected most likely to work and work opportunities. And secondarily to money from inheritances or other shared resources. All right, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. It is a sky, and I have a progressed sun here. Progressions are not as important, not as important as your primary natal sky, but it does help to know your progressed placements. Now, when you have the planet Jupiter in the house of you, your sun is your career, your moon is your body and your mind and your home, and your sun and your ascendant is your body and everything about you, the whole character. When you have Jupiter here, things go well. You are lucky. You are lucky. I am so lucky. So lucky. So lucky. You're also prosperous. You also may put some muscle on, or you may get pregnant and expand your girth, or you might get chubbier than you normally are. I put weight on in the summertime, even walking the Camino. I'm like, how did I do that? So I put weight on, uh, but you can also get rich and you can get lucky and you can get magnanimous and big and successful. And my YouTube channel is taking off as this transit has occurred. 
So for example, so how are things picking up for you guys, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising? Let me know. I'd love to hear how it feels for you so far. Jupiter is also going to be squaring Saturn as he did August the 19th from Gemini to Saturn in your 10th house, perhaps around August the 19th, the week before and after something to do with the work career and your identity felt challenging to you. You might have been feeling like you want to expand, but you had to slow it down. Something said slow things down. What was needing to slow down? And it could be that you also consolidated something with a kind of wisdom uh, during that window of time in the middle of August. You made some consolidating types of action decisions from a place of King Solomon wisdom. Jupiter is that guy. What also may be going on is that Jupiter is going to retrograde through to February the 4th, covering material that has been in your life since mid-July. Remember that? And this should remind you of, you know, June of 2012 to June of 2013. Go back to that time frame when Jupiter was in Gemini. How did you expand? How did you grow? What was taking off for you? Where were things really rolling forward? But also October the 8th of 2012 to February of 2013, the same retrograde period where things also pulled back and slowed down. It is this time, you know, May of 2024 to June of 25, that we have this retrograde again in the fall, October through February. And you may be changing direction about something you were thinking of doing creatively, but it's a positive change of direction and a rethink. I say that because the house of creative projects, art projects, creativity, entrepreneurial businesses with a very strong Mercury, Juno, Sun, Stellium at the time of the station retrograde indicates that you're really in a strong condition to revise things that you were going to create, whether it was a business plan for entrepreneurship, a creative project, you're going to go back and rethink and re revise what you want to accomplish there. Now, you do have fertility for pregnancy when Jupiter's in the first house. If you're the one with the the belly and the eggs, you know, the big egg bearer, you women, you could be getting pregnant under any Jupiter transit. And it's an interesting combination to see the South Node stellium in your fifth house. And it could be that you're rethinking timing around pregnancy or rethinking when you wish to get pregnant. That's a possibility here. If you are in a dating relationship and Juno, Mercury, Sun, your partner may propose to you. <laughs> you may get a marriage proposal out of this, um, seriously, but you're going back over old ground in that romantic sexual love dating relationship that you've been dancing through since July. Okay. So if you're going to get some kind of wedding proposal, some sort of deeper commitment, you know, an announcement or something from your partner that he wants to, she wants to marry you. He wants to marry you. It could be that the retrograde is because you suspect it all along. That's where it was going to go. And now it's, it's coming out of the, out of the woodwork or something. And um, that's about it. I don't forget if you're doing creative projects, Libra library, Libra book, this is really good for any of you who want to get book books written during the retrograde. You're going inward. You're not trying to push outward success and you might write a book or book proposal. That's what I'm trying to do, etc. during the retrograde of Jupiter. Cancer, sun, moon, and rising. Well, remember, it's always about the 12th house, things that you're not seeing directly. It's behind you where Jupiter's traveling. And it's kind of like you might not be quite aware of some of the deep soul work going on in this Moksha spiritual liberation 12th house. As guru, Jupiter dispels some darkness. This is really great for you cancers to break bad habits and patterns, quit addictions, but certainly also end karmatic bonds and, and karmatic chains, basically, um, from past lives and family of origin stories that have held you back. You went through a Jupiter transit through your 12th house back in June of 2012 into June of 2013. And it's back again, May of 2024 to June of 2025. That's the year long stay of Jupiter in your 12th house. The retrograde back in 1213 was again, October through to February. And it's again, October 9th through to February 4th. 
you're going to go back over old ground. It is in the spiritual part of your chart. So you may revisit old spiritual philosophies, get in touch with old spiritual teachers that you've been out of touch with. You may even have opportunities or desires to travel abroad to places you've been before, especially far off foreign shores, no doubt about it, with Saturn in your foreign lands house and Jupiter in your far off shores house. This is a time as well with Jupiter here that you're going to encounter some tension in December as Jupiter squares Saturn from retrogradation in your Saturn in your ninth house on December 24th. But it's just like August the 19th when that square was also happening in your sky. And you might go back and say, where was there some frustration, delay, or difficulty, or caution regarding book publishing, publications, um, travel, visas, foreign lands, foreign shores, and spiritual teachers, guides, and mentors. There was some kind of not frustration per se, but some kind of tension you had to deal with, looking for the wisdom and the caution in the situation. In August, it's back again. Jupiter is also the Lord of where Saturn sits and is trying to get Saturn to do what he wants. So this could very much look for some of you like finally getting that visa settled or getting that uh, financial not financial, that book publishing deal done from all the things you're doing quietly home alone in the back deals and negotiations and backroom deals and negotiations of the 12th house, right? Opportunity comes from backroom deals and negotiations and travel publishing and international matters. And then, oh, we have that energy of Mercury that we really like at the beginning of this. This is really powerful. Mercury in the th fourth house could really open up new opportunities for marketing, selling, or buying a home. And with Pluto moving into your eighth house of mortgages and shared resources, that's going to increase after October 11th to sell a home or buy a home, purchase a home, whatever it can really be a story here for you. And you may have connections to foreigners or foreign places when it comes to the kinds of things you're doing. Someone from a foreign place wants to purchase your home. You want to purchase a home in another country, that kind of story, or in a far off foreign shore. That doesn't always mean a foreign land, right? Like, you know, it could be the other side of your country. Mercury is the protector of travelers and he's flowing to Jupiter in the house of foreign and far off places. And, uh, but if you're going to travel, retrogradation means you've been there before. You're going to go to a place you've traveled before, a far off adventure, but you're familiar with the foreign far off place that you're traveling. That's what, how I see it anyway. Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. It is a sky that indicates for you that just like in 2012 to 13, June to June, and just like May of 24 to June of 2025, you have Jupiter in your house of good spirit. And this is the house of his joy. This is so good for you. This is literally like Jupiter's on happy's pills here. So it's good for windfalls, pennies from heaven, and it's good for greater gro growth with your career, uh, like financially greater gains, greater social groups of friendships, powerful new, powerful movement making friends and movers and shakers, allies and benefactors. It also benefits your sibling, one elder than you as well. And they can thrive and do really well during this transit. I do think that with this Jupiter up here in the house of his joy, you can't go wrong. And one of the things about it is it could because of retrogradation, as he goes backwards, October the 9th of February 4th, you could go back over opportunities, Jupiter, that come from the career story that you have maybe been thinking about or investigating or moving forward on since July 15th. And it can lead to greater depth and greater wisdom because on February the 4th through till June, you're really raking in the career success, whether it's reputation, whether it's rewards, whether it's awards, whether it's money, you're moving forward in a very powerful way at that time. Jupiter retrograde can bring uh, wise friends from the past to you during this time where people that you haven't talked to for a while come back to you and you get to you get in touch with them and they're you know back in your story. Uh, Jupiter up here is really good for uh, having friends who have big favors for you, but the retrograde means those big favors are from, from friends that you've known before or people you've intersected with since socially since July 15th.
Jupiter will square Saturn on December 24th, just like he did on August the 19th. So in around that time, give or take a week on either side, you may hit a bit of a challenge point regarding other people's money that you must share. This money of the square, this money in your eighth house can be a loan, a mortgage, an investment, money with a bank, you share shareholders, right? You might share money with a spouse or you might have inheritance monies that need to be shared. A Saturn represents the elder and maybe quite possibly some of you may be looking at inheritance from a grandfather, great-grandfather, great-grand-uncle, whatever, coming through the sky. We'll see, because one of the things about it is that when Saturn is here, he often indicates elders passing. So any elders passing may be a part of the narrative. Um, and Saturn is retrograde until November 14th, and Jupiter is retrograde, and they're moving toward each other. And this feeling of two planets moving toward each other is like some money wants to move towards you, but it's somebody else's money, and it's coming at you. And that may be really true for a lot of you, Leo, someone else's money coming at you. It doesn't have to require death coming at you between October the 9th, 10th, and uh November the 14th. You want to notice that Jupiter is also in a big flow vibe to Mercury and Juno and the sun here with the south node, but this trio as these stations to go retrograde. There may be some really big opportunities involving a sibling, one younger or older, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, and nieces, and travel, perhaps travel, or, um, well, perhaps travel, you know, or learning with these people in your life. Jupiter wants you to have fun. He wants you to have bigger uh, and bolder and more uh, delightful joy in the house of social activities or relationship to the sibling older. And all of a sudden we're activating the younger sibling communication, conversation, Mercury, travel, protection, ideas. If you're somebody who has a website, a social media platform, you do work online, that's the third house. Mercury is commerce and the sun is light and Juno is partnerships. You may partner up with somebody else to make greater prosperity happen. As a result of the retrograde, it's somebody you've already known or you've been thinking of partnering with or collaborating with ever since July 15th. And now this collaboration can be reassessed or redressed for greater flow, ease and prosperity and gains in your career, especially if you are in a writing career, communicating career, teaching career, learning career, <laughs> or you're busy online. In the land of social media. And let's get on to the next story. Next after Leo is Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. It is a sky that says you are going to have Jupiter. Bro, ho, ho, Santa Claus giving you career luck. End of story. Enjoy. Have a ride. Have fun. Or reputation expansion. Like I'm single now. I'm married. I'm engaged. These are things that happen. My Virgo girlfriend's guy just gave her a ring. So what's going on, right? Jupiter is that guy at the top of the sky, especially as he owns your marriage house. They can indicate proposals, expansion, like moving in together, you know, growing old together, getting married, getting uh, wedding dates planned, that kind of stuff. Now, Jupiter has been in this part of your sky ever since May 26th and will not leave until June 9th. And he, it's just like he was there back uh, June of 2012 to June of 2013. It's a rinse repeat. The retrograde back in 2012-13 was also October through February. The retrograde this time is again October 9th through February 4th. You're going to go back over some old ground in your career. You've been lucky as hell, and you're going back over lucky career breaks that have been activated since July 15th for luck, expansion, growth, uh, maybe uh, getting a new job, maybe getting a raise, a promotion, more power, the boss loving you. Now you're going to go back over that space that you've been in, and that includes the relationship space where things have gotten to the higher heights of the sky and there's some new level, new level, next level going on. With Jupiter retrograde, if it's about your career, then bosses, colleagues, coworkers, and things from the past may occur, not just things since the past of July 15th, but the broader past, right? So, you know, how do, you can go back as far as you want. People from the past and your collegiate professional endeavors returning from the dark, you know, coming into the light. So that happens. Also, as Jupiter goes back, you're reassessing and revising the way you want to make your career successful. You might have bumped into a career 
crunchy moment, August the 19th, when Jupiter was going direct and squared Saturn, and you might have felt like somebody hit the brakes on you, and or, or you just really had to be more cautious in your significant relationship with the main partner. Some real hardships might have activated mid-August, but also regarding your career as well and how you had to balance maybe career and work matters or career, I mean, career and love matters, career and relationship matters, or just some problems with a particularly gnarly client or member of your marketplace. That would have been mid-August, August 19th. Well, on December the 24th, the energy is also back. Jupiter will square Saturn from the 10th house to the 7th. If it was career problems back then with other people in your life, it'll be back again December 24th. Go back to see the nature of the challenge that happened in mid-August. It will be back in the third week of December, give or take a week on either side. That said, Jupiter is in a flow to Mercury, and I can't say enough how I love this for you. Something's going on as Jupiter retrogrades where you're going to find greater increase in your well-being financially because of Mercury and Juno in the second house, a new contract, a new agreement, a new job offer, um, something from the past, South Node and Jupiter retrograde coming your way to increase your, your well-being, people from your past, situations from your past to do with resources, money, wealth, career, and reputation increasing. And with Pluto on the 10th, no, Pluto on the 19th of November heading into your sixth house, work, career, and money stories are going to power up like you haven't seen in this lifetime. It's going to be amazing for you. So right now you're sort of in the behind the scenes because Jupiter retrograde is doing things sort of subtly and quietly through to February 4th. So that February 4th through to May, through to June 9th next year, you are like all systems go in your career. But in the short term, with Mercury in your second house, <clears throat> you might find that something going on, perhaps close to this week ahead, close to the ninth, could indicate good news about money and good news about career and some positive up levels there. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, this is a nice placement, Jupiter in the ninth house flowing in a water trine from the ninth to the first. You don't mind this at all, no matter what happens. And Jupiter isn't a naturally happy house just because it's kind of the preacher pulpit house and he's that guy. But he's up here and he'll travel here in that part of your sky. He has been here May the 26th through to June 9th of next year, May this year to June 9th next year, a whole year. This whole year of Jupiter in your ninth house also occurred in June of 2012 to June of 13, if you want to compare notes. And both times that retrograde is in October of, of each year through to February of the following year. So October of 2012 to February 2013, what did you go back on? And you're doing it again this time, October the 9th to February the 4th. This is a house of book publishing. This is a house of spiritual community. This is a house of far off foreign shores, visas, travel and lands. This is a house of third marriages, legal matters with courts and judges. It is a Lakshmi and a luck house. So it brings prosperity and Jupiter is a luck God, indicating some lucky money prosperity might come to you, especially with the well star Algol being activated by Uranus again and again during this transit. So, uh, you know, Merc uh, and then, oh my God, I can't even go there. Surprising, shocking amount, amount of chunky money coming your way from a father, father figure, perhaps, or a grandfather, father figure. Now, this energy with Jupiter retrograde could indicate teachers, guides, mentors, or international foreign people from your past coming forward out of the woodwork. Things you've been working on during this retrograde that started July 15th, you're going to deepen, go back over, revise the book manuscript, revise the, uh, the things you did. Jupiter loves to travel sometimes in the 12th house. He's like, let's more travel, more travel, more travel. And so you may be planning or making plans to travel again to a place you've been before, or even doing that travel during this retrograde. One thing about it is that Jupiter is also very much like spiritual wisdom and knowledge all by himself. And that's the house of spiritual wisdom and knowledge. And you may deepen your spiritual wisdom and knowledge by going into new paths of spiritual attainment, faith, etc. Now that square that Jupiter is going to make in, in the month of December on the 24th to Saturn, who will then be direct in your sixth house of work, same energy you encountered in August means there's a 
there's a clash of energy between the work and work routines and health and health routines and matters to do with what you're attending to in the ninth house. And ninth house is a powerful house for Dharma, being in alignment with your true calling and purpose. And yet there are obligations and you're grinding in work matters and health matters. And this can be, again, a period of having to come to terms with what's realistic. I mean, Saturn is the realist and Jupiter could just want to like, you know, go big or go home. And Saturn is like, yeah, but you can only do so much at one time. So if you want to compare what December feels like the third week, go back to the middle of August. That's what Jupiter is having to tango with Saturn. Saturn is moving towards Jupiter, Jupiter towards Saturn, however, in a really kind of nice, you know, meet each other way, both retrograde. So, well, not really. So let me take that out. (laughs) Brain, come back online. Jupiter's moving towards Saturn and trying to make contact with Saturn as he's retrograding. And I think what he's trying to say, I think what he's trying to say is he's trying to say, I want us to move in a direction where work is not so hard. I want us to move in a direction where work is aligned with purpose. I want us to move in a direction where I could find myself, you know, feeling like um, I'm, I'm in my true North alignment. And if it means like letting go of something in the work environment, working not so hard or changing a health routine, especially around things you eat or drink, uh, Venus, trying uh, Saturn, Jupiter's helping you have the knowledge, wisdom, and truth to do that. Uh, The trying to Mercury is beautiful, 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 beautiful. So Mercury in the first house, your mind is sharp. You're thinking clearly, you're balanced, you have ideas, you're communicating like a diplomat and the sun is shining brightly and you're bright and your wisdom is coming from the South spiritual node and, you know, partnering with others. You, You may have the opportunity sometime early on in the story, sometime maybe uh, closer to October 10th, 11th, 12th, to partner up with somebody and make a, an alliance regarding publications, book publishing, foreign lands, foreign travel. You are looking for partnership. You are looking for agreements. You are looking for, you know, the, the, the commitment from someone else. And this is a good time to get it. This is a good time for you to level up. Publishing and podcasting is Ninth House Matters. And so is teaching. So teaching, publishing, and podcasting can be very highlighted with great success for you anytime. But you're going from the retrograde. So you've, you've done this kind of thing before. You've worked in these kinds of settings before. It's nothing new. And it's really good for settling a legal matter in a court and court situation from the past and getting that settled with great wisdom and equanimity. Thank you, Scott. That's another thing this retrograde could offer you. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. In the sky, it looks to me like you're going to do a Jupiter in a chunky money house and maybe get some money. And inheritance is an example, stock taking off, money from other people, and unearned income and resources you share with others. Jupiter is in your eighth house. Now, this get yourself a little richer story happened in the past. You might go back to June of 2012 to June of 2026. Yes, think about inheritance. My Scorpio rising son got an inheritance from the death of his grandmother in that window of time. This could also be another wave of inheritance for Scorpio risings, if that's something that you're entitled to. And this is May 26th of 2024 to June the 9th of 2025. But it is the retrograde period and go back therefore to August, uh, October of 2012 to February 2013 is the same vibe of October this year to February next year. So for example, You may go back over some financial matters, accounting, bookkeeping, um, things to do with property and real estate and mortgages, especially with Pluto on the 10th, I mean, sorry, on the 19th of November, moving into your fourth house and Jupiter still in your eighth, going back over old ground regarding financing, mortgages, things to do with home, property, land and real estate. Ultimately, I think this is going to look really good on you financially, no matter what. And Pluto means legacy wealth. And so if you're going to receive an inheritance from your family of origin, it's most likely coming after mid-November through to February. However, you could also just have a winning stock pick. That, that's a good op- option here. That would work. Or you could end up finding yourself in possession of money through your spouse and their inheritance monies or their finances increasing as well. 
And there's a bit of gritty tension on December 24th. It reiterates August 19th. Both times Jupiter will square Saturn. This is Jupiter in your eighth house of chunky money, other people's money, squaring Saturn in the house of romantic love, children, entrepreneurial businesses, and creative projects. This could indicate tension with money and children, tension with creative and entrepreneurial businesses, and not necessarily negative. You have to be more realistic about the way this money is worked on speculation, like a speculative stock investment. Be cautious. This is the money um, house for that stuff. Jupiter is there, but he doesn't have the details. And Gemini, do not invest in a speculative stock. Be very careful. Saturn is the realist, but you don't have the details of um, Mercury in, in the place where Gemini sits. Saturn's hardship was felt by you constraining you August the 19th or so, or so around that time. So you can compare this to December 24th. It'll feel the same, give or take a week on either side. Um, then the beginning of this transit, Jupiter is flowing to Mercury. This feels positive for all involved. Mercury is saying, especially this week ahead, but baking in the vibe of the station direct, a feeling that one of the things that this includes is flowing uh, about flowing and easy outcomes regarding creative projects, regarding things you're doing at home alone, in your back backroom deals and negotiations is also favored for financial gain. Uh, you can pay off debts with this aspect to the nodes of fate in the next few months, pay off cars, pay off mortgages. You might also be able to get into some kind of um, secret agreements or secret financial deals. Uh, that benefit you, especially involving contracts from people from far off foreign shores and foreign lands. Finally, you know, things that go on in your home aloneness, you know, when you're no one sees you, when you're isolated, uh, doing things privately behind the scenes that are communications oriented. Mercury is a writer. He's a songwriter too. Those things could lead to some chunky money, like a commission, a royalty income, some superior benefits in the long game of this story. So we're talking about things you're doing home alone, especially in the next couple of weeks, can really benefit longer term prosperity for some of you, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising, including writing projects uh, or songwriting as well, because it's Libra just writing liberal library books. Um, what else can I say? That's about it. But I do think that a great deal of you are going to have some increase in your finances, not the earnings, but chunky money coming to you over the next year. Thank you, Jupiter in the eighth house. All right, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. This is a story of Jupiter's transit for a year through Gemini. And this started up May 26th of 24 through to June 9th of 2025. And it happened before, right? It happened before in your seventh house, June 11th, 2012 to June 26th of 2013. Just that transit alone indicates changes in marital status. You, I have a Sag ex-husband and we got married in the June of 12 to June of 13 timeframe. <laughs> so Sag son, but yeah. So you might get married, you might get uh, move in with someone, you might elevate a relationship to another status. If you're single, it could bring a new relationship in that's quite bountiful. Because this is a retrogradation, however, just like October of 2012 to February 2013, we had a retrograde then. You're going to do again the same time frame, October to February retrograde. You're going to go backwards on stuff. You're going to rethink it regarding your long-term committed love stories. Now, Jupiter can bring endings, blessed endings. So if you have an ascendant, uh, descended axis anywhere between, um, let's say, 10 and 22 degrees of Gemini, sun, moon, and rising, some of you, this can be a reneging energy, like, oh, I'm not going to stay married, or the marriage partner changes their mind, or the committed love story is being reassessed. Because Jupiter here is just as good to end a relationship, blessed endings, as he is to commit to start one brand new, spanking new. Old spouses from the past, old long-term committed love stories from the past return in Jupiter retrogrades here. Expect that over the next, you know, October through February to be in touch with those people, hear from them or see from them again, see them again. Uh, Jupiter retrograde is in the house of business deals, you know, handshakes, deals, 
contracts and agreements legal and old legal contracts and agreements from the past are coming back, especially given Jupiter flowing to the 11th house of career gains. Some of you might get old job contracts back. Mercury rules your 10th house. You know, you may be rehired by an old employer. You may get new opportunities from the past in your career returning to you contractually as a result of this transit. Also, friends from your past, not just long-term love stories, can be communicating with you as well during this time, the four months ahead. Um, the square to Saturn is important. It's going to be on December 24th, but you also felt it on August the 19th. Jupiter will square Saturn in your fourth house. Saturn is like home alone, lonely at home, quiet at home, elder in the home, isolated in the home melancholic in the home. This is what you've been going through. I think a lot of you for a while, right? Since, <laughs> since last year, since last March, when Saturn entered into your fourth house, he's leaving that territory in 2026. Jupiter is your partner. Jupiter is a significant other. Don't forget, Jupiter is in a sign of exile. You might feel this isn't the most perfect time for you, not even most perfect relationship. And there's alone at home, home alone. And maybe you felt isolated or separated or alone at home in the context of long-term committed love. And that vibe for those of you in relationships was acute for you or strongly felt in August, middle of August. And it'll be back in the third week of December. And, you know, there may be some issues going on with another person regarding matters of the home and the domestic life. That's a lot of stress on you, August 19th. And again, in the, around December the 24th. Saturn wants caution and realism. Jupiter wants to go big. Um, you know, you might be having situations with a significant other where they want to do something radical and go big or go home. And the realistic part of it is there's no accommodation for that in the home. You know, there's some kind of stress point here. Um, I do want to say though, that with Jupiter in your seventh house, any legal contracts you do sign are blessed and lucky. And so if you do want to sign a legal contract or something, uh, get it, get the details guys in there, right? Cause Jupiter doesn't notice the fine print, but you still have a divine protection in those matters. Good for signing a book publishing deal, okay? Just because Mercury rules your house of publications and he's trining Jupiter. So if you're a book publishing deal type of person, uh, Sag, is, this is good for you. Now, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising. You had Jupiter moving through this part of your sky called Gemini, the house of work and health and pets and debts that to be paid off the debt payment program. You had this energy back in June of 2012 to June of 26. It's back again. Here we are, May of 24 to June of 25. Rinse and repeat. Even the retrograde, October of 2012 to February of 2013 is the same as October 9th of this year to February 4th of next year. What does it all mean? First of all, Jupiter expands things, and this is a house that represents domestic animals or pets. And so this is often a time of increase when it comes to animals in your life, domestic animals and bigger, more, more than one increase. Some of you will get new pets because of it. Now the retrograde could be a pet from the past returning. I don't know how that happens, but it could. A retrograde could be uh, rethinking things to do with animals and pets as well. Jupiter retrograde here can also have you go back to old health protocols to improve your health. And Jupiter retrograde here can also bring you job opportunities from the past. Now that's a, not a bad opportunity here this week ahead or two weeks ahead, especially just because of Mercury and Libra at the top of the sky, sun, uh, past South Node contracts and agreements. A few of you people will find job opportunities, career opportunities, and communications connected to matters of the past. You could say connected to things that have been going on since July 15th or just the past in general. You could also note that Jupiter here would be looking at the idea of intensely wanting to improve your health because he's a benefic in a house of sickness. So health improvements are also really possible, but when the retrograde happens, instead of jumping forward to improve your health, you're going back. And so you'll go back to old ways that you've already a, a, accommodated better health that you've known this is how to be more healthy. And you're returning back to them during this retrograde of October to February. 
You might notice that there was tension here back in August when Jupiter was in direct motion in your sixth house, squaring realistic Saturn at that time direct in your third house, indicating there was some tension around travel, work, health, debts, pets. And there's travel tensions then, August the 19th. It doesn't have to be too bad, by the way. Maybe there was an opportunity for travel and it wasn't a realistic time to take it. Maybe you did travel and it felt difficult for some reason because you couldn't, you weren't healthy enough or you had to focus on work projects and third house of short distance travel wasn't bringing, bearing the fruit that you wanted or something like that. But, you know, Saturn is consolidation and structure. And, and, and you, you, there's a desire to make some consolidated gains in your third house of neighbors, neighborhood, short distance travel, learning. If Saturn had his druthers, he'd be saying like, let's get a solid, solid situation developed here. And what I consider my relationships, with my younger sibling or neighbors and neighborhood matters. Saturn here sometimes wants us to go back to school, skills-based learning, especially learn a trade, learn a tool, learn a skill as he's transiting here through to 2026. Now, the energy with Jupiter in the sixth house, it's a karmic debt servicing house, right? We have debt in the eighth, we service it in the sixth as well. You might feel with a retrograde Jupiter connected to Lord Saturn, there's a sense of, because he's a karma planet, there's a sense maybe in December that you're going to have to postpone or change or redirect something you thought you were going to do regarding career and travel. But also, I'm not sure that there's something going on. It's just not, I'm not getting it here for you guys because, you know, Saturn in, in Pisces is, is trying to take orders from Jupiter. could be something as simple as a writing project stalls a bit um, because of a situation with a pet or a health challenge or a, you know, something going on in the house of, of your work environment. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to stop at that because it's, you know, individual to your chart. I'm just giving you general astrology. If I had advice for any Capricorns here, I'd say apply for jobs <laughs> if you're looking. Otherwise, get, apply for promotions and raises, all right, during this Jupiter transit, especially as it kicks off. It's very powerful for things coming over the transit positively for you, October now, I mean, really October 5th to like the 16th, 17th, all righty. All right, Aquarius. Yes, I am one of you. I have a rising. This is Aquarius sun, moon, and rising sign. It looks like Jupiter air trines from the fifth house. It's a fertility transit. If you're of that age, people get pregnant with this one quite often. This is Jupiter making babies for you in the fifth house, June the 11th of 2012 to January, June of 2013. June of 2013. You've had this before. What babies did you make? It's back again, May 26th of 24 to June. 8, 9th, 2025. Of course, I don't make babies at my age, but I made baby businesses during the transit in 2012, 13. I'll probably make some more baby businesses at this time. So entrepreneurial, creative projects, business projects, children, fertility, grandchildren. This is baking in the potential that as Jupiter retrogrades, uh, you may find, especially in the trine to Mercury in the house of grandchildren, that news that you will be a grandparent may come through the sky between now and February or simply between now and next June. And it was funny because I had a dream last night that I was looking for a crib for my grandchild. <laughs> so there you go. There's a prediction. Um when Jupiter's in this fifth house, you're lucky. It's a house of good fortune. He's a house. He's a luck god. You got a four leaf clover and a horseshoe here, and it's really good for winning lotteries. Okay, this is the one transit this is good for, because games of chance and winning money is the fifth house, and Jupiter is the guy who brings the luck and the expansion and the plenty and the prosperity. This is not my instructions for you to play the lottery, and I don't like when you guys say, "Oh, I didn't win," like you said I would. No, this is general bell curve astrology. You have to know what your natal chart says about your propensity to win. Could you even win? Where is your natal Jupiter? How does he witness this transit? But in essence, it's a lucky transit. And, you know, I think it's funny that he flows to Mercury, mercantile and commerce in the house of governments, because all lotteries are made 
given to you by your government. So there is a possibility you could win some money in this transit. Now the retrogradation means it's a kind of it's a kind of winning strategy you've tried before. You've bought that kind of ticket before. You know this game before. You played that casino game before. It's something you've tried before, known before. So you might have been lucky financially if you want to go back in time and think about June of 2012 to July, June of 2013 and the idea of money luck. What happened then? It may happen again or maybe similar. Um, may of, yeah, so I'm not going to, I'm trying to think about my own examples, but I'm not having any. So the other one is, is that Jupiter in this time frame, although he does flow to this, it's great for creative projects and book publishing deals. It's great for creative projects and travel to foreign lands. It's great for your children and their luck and their fertility and their growth and their goodness. It blesses your children. Generally, Jupiter's transit through the fifth house, your children, young or old, do better. They're having collateral benefits. Um, but Jupiter also squares Saturn. Now, he did the square to Saturn from Gemini in your fifth house. He did that already back in August on the 19th. And this is your earnings and money. And this is what you eat and put in your mouth. And it was squaring jolly Jupiter in the house of pleasures and fun. And you may have felt some constriction or constraint around fun and pleasures, but it's deeper than that. Saturn's a realist and he's putting backbone and structure in place for your long range financial success. And he's doing that through to 2026. And then he comes into the realist and the backbone. Jupiter just wants to grow faster and bigger and better and go big or go home. And the two of them must reconcile. Yes, August the 19th, give or take a week. And now December 24th, give or take a week. If you go back to the August timeframe, you might get a vibe for what's happening in December. If you want to have a situation where you're working with a, one of your children regarding matters of money and dispensation of money because they want money from you because Jupiter expands everything, including what your children want, then you've got some sort of common sense guardrail in place here with Saturn in the part of the chart that's your purse string. Okay. Keep that in mind as well. And lastly, any creative projects or entrepreneurial businesses that you birth while well, Jupiter goes retrograde, even it's just the idea of it, then February the 4th through to June, they're going to take off, but they're going to be steady, reliable, and give you long run, long term gains financially, not just quick, get rich quick. They're going to be legacy wealth ish products or businesses or creative projects, and they're going to go the distance for you. All right. Last, you know, I do love this Mercury up here in the Lakshmi Luck House, but with the South Node, if you're going to win a fortune or a treasure chest, it's coming off past life karmatic dividend checks. <laughs> you deserve it. It's your turn. It's your reward. And last, Pisces, a never least sun, moon, and rising sign. Jupiter is a sign that is your Lord, just like it's the Lord of the sign for Sages, your primary planet, uh, your ruler. And he's moving um, as he has done before through your fourth house of home property and real estate, land and legacy. Well, money from mom and dad inheritances. He was here June 11th of 2012 to June 26th of 2013. He's back again, May of 2024 to June of 2025. This is your every 12 year luck in and from and about the home. And you can get prosperous in and from your home by what you're doing down there. You can also have luck and prosperity by buying and selling home and property and real estate or big expansions of your home to a bigger home or growing a bigger home because you're adding an addition. These are just examples. Jupiter here is retrograde and that's October 9th to February 4th. He was retrograde in 2012 fall to spring of 13 in the same months, right? O o October through February. So you're going to go backwards over, especially over things you were engaging in since mid July, but even longer back maybe, and you're going to re -go, re go over things to do with land, home, property, and real estate, and to consolidate or change something, revise or revision, so that you can really move forward February through to June of next year. Now, 
Mercury rules the house of marriage and he's in the house of shared resources. So business and marriage partners and the money you share with them and things to do with home, property, and land are heavily activated by the retrograde of Jupiter. Now, retrograding here could also mean money from your, the past connected to mom or dad, but with the trying to Mercury also from your f significant marriage type partner. Um You're going to have self node transits moving to your marriage house and don't want to scare you, but if you're going to have a divorce, it's going to be in the next two years. And there may be something going on in this next, you know, four months that are giving you a sort of a heads up about the way the money you have and your partner shared together needs to be dealt with in a more equitable or equal way. Mercury in Libra and Juno contracts and agreements because also there's tension in the sky with this Jupiter squaring Saturn. And he, you know, you are Saturn, you are sober minded, realistic, you're stern, you're taskmaster, you're wise, you're sage like right now, you got Saturn power in you. And then you're looking over at this story with Jupiter. And you guys are having a tension here. And Jupiter would just want to expand the home by, you know, let's build a pool and a, a, a turd and a giant deck. <laughs> and Saturn is like, that's not realistic. Let's wait a minute. Let's think about it. Uh, Jupiter would want to give you um, luck at home and in the home. And with Mercury in the house of mortgages, buy a home, sell a home, go for it, refinance your mortgage for your home. Everybody's happy and you're doing it because you're going backwards. You're going to refinance the old mortgage, the old terms of your loans about property, land, and real estate, home equity loan, pay it off, reservice it, refinance it. Things like money and home matters are really on the agenda for you. Yet Saturn, especially in December, is going to be much more realistic about it all more cautious about it all. It's like cautious about buying a home, cautious about selling a home, cautious about refinancing the home, something like that, really big in December. Now, although you don't have homes, I get that. So Jupiter down there is a lot of things. You might want to learn from home, study from home, teach from home. If you're going to learn from home, you're going to learn something you've already learned before. And you're just going to deepen it in the next you know, four months, October through February, so that you can spring forward into greater prosperity about things you do in from your home, in and from your home, February through to May. Deepen a learning from home till you can spring forward. You know, Jupiter rules your 10th house of career. And that any learning you do from home will serve as your career and reputation in a positive way. Because Mercury, Juno, and Sun are in the inheritance house, and Jupiter is in a legacy wealth house, there's a possibility they might inherit some money uh, from someone somewhere, somehow, some way, from your family of origin, or from your significant other and their family over the course of the next few months through to next February. The retrograde means it somehow could even be due you, money that was due you from the past, from your family of origin. You know, you, sometimes this happens, people get inheritances and the lawyers go back over it and say, oh my God, we forgot to give you the life insurance check. So money from your past, from your family, from your past that may have been entitled, you, know, you were entitled to could show up again out of the blue and it's now yours or from a significant spouse or other. Uh, and you re realize that you have some unrealized um, financial benefits from those past situations that can still come back to you. Okay. Thanks for listening. I wish you the very best Pisces and all the signs going forward. It is a Jupiter retrograde. It's not the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> Watch out for the square in December. Don't forget, uh, there's a Mars stationing on the US Mars, and that's just like Pearl Harbor all over again. US getting dragged into a global conflagration wouldn't surprise me at all. When next two years wouldn't surprise me at all, but next four, four months wouldn't surprise me at all. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. I love love meeting you guys. I listen to you in the comments. Patreon gets everything early access ad free recording on October 4th for you guys get this on 6th of October. Patreon probably gets this today, but they might get it tomorrow because I made a blooper and I have to edit it. It's going to take me time, but they get things up to a week in advance or sometimes a couple of days in advance with no ads, ad free, early access. And they have chat rooms with me and we have three meetings with Zoom and I teach things over there that I don't teach here. And I can speak more freely there about what I think about things in the world. So check out my Patreon community in the description box below. Only five bucks a month for the cheapest tier. It's quite affordable. Bye everyone.